everybody. Good morning. This is Jean here. Jean True Love from True Love Quilts for you. First thing I want to do is to thank everybody for all your love and all of your um, lovely messages for us to get well and to feel better. Um, this cold, summer cold, had been hanging on uh, for a good three weeks. <laughs> really 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 something else i am feeling so much better just getting lots of rest unfortunately my dear husband ian he has um pretty bad nose and coughing i had the cough um hacking cough i could not get rid of really really bad i suppose as you get older um it's harder to shake things anyway um because our son niles has had it and it was it was about two weeks mine was about three ian had to go get some antibiotics because it had turned a bit nasty but thank you so much i have not co um commented or um responded to my lovely comments on my last few videos we have been busy and i'm sure you appreciate that and understand that um, but again i just want to say a carte blanche thank you so very much we are feeling better ian is on the mend with his antibiotics thank goodness for modern medicine um, we did have some excitement um ian's niece katie and her husband peter are visiting from um, london they live right near windsor castle um, in England and they um, are they've had a very long weekend here um, or week actually they are staying with our son Jordan and his wife Heather um, and on um, videoing this on I think Monday Monday is it or Tuesday um, Monday um, on Friday evening they came Wednesday Thursday on Friday evening the entire family got together um, we are so very blessed that we can get together there are 40 of us um, the picture that I'm going to put up at the end is my immediate family as you know I won't bore you people who've watched um, bar two of our older grandsons they couldn't make it um, but 17 of our grandkids and then of course my brother Donald and his wife Patty are in the photograph and then Peter and Katie um, I met Katie when she was 10 years old 43 years ago um, in England and she's just a, a beautiful lovely lovely person with her husband Peter and they have two girls who are there are now empty nesters actually um, Ella and Mia are doing their thing and um, lovely family we've so enjoyed it um, Saturday we went out to brunch with them a beautiful restaurant nearby um, and uh, then on Sunday yesterday um, quite a lot of our family went to um, a winery Ian wasn't feeling well enough and there's no way I would have stayed outside and <coughs> excuse me um, for two seconds in 96 degree heat that's what it was it's sort of broken a little bit today it's not quite as hot but man it has been very very hot as you know half the country is is suffering we don't have central air here in our in our on our old house um, however we do have two mini splits and room fans and I'm telling you they are doing a marvelous job to feel like we have central air wonderful wonderful old home we live in this house is uh, about 112 years old oh i have to laugh because um peter and katie came on saturday to to see our home um because they know all about the disaster and losing a home and how blessed we are um to have found this home and they came up and i'm like yeah it's an old house you know <laughs> And they were ooing and eyeing, just loving it, really, really loving it. It was so American with the porch and everything. And But then Peter showed us a picture, and I didn't know it. Their home is 550 years old <laughs> in England. It's a grade two listed building, 550 years old. It was an old mill, and they've had permission um, jumping through hoops to get permission to put on a large addition uh, for a big open air uh, uh, vaulted ceiling um, living room and kitchen but the original home the doorways are about this big he said you have to you have to go under um, so I was like wah wah all right England is older than America but we live in an old house we're so thrilled so anyway that was our weekend our week um, busy busy again I'll put some pictures up I have been in my sewing room now and I have been doing sewing on my embroidered blocks um, quilt as well as my snowflake quilt the reason I'm sort of um, double dealing with these two quilts is I I'm hoping 
if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I'm hoping to enter it into a quilt show, which is in September. The um, quilt deadline is for is July 29th, so I have to I have to get going, which I've I've been doing now. Um, not this not these past couple weeks, but I'm I'm starting it now. I'm actually quilting my embroidered blocks quilt. I'm going to be um, showing you a little bit later how I'm doing that. My free motion quilting. Oops, my free motion quilting, um, and some photographs of how far I've gotten along. I'm doing my snowflake quilt. The, the majority of that's done. Uh, quite a few people have been asking, am I going to be doing a tutorial? Very loosely, I'm going to be doing a tutorial. I've been just videoing bits of how I've made that quilt. It's not a tutorial. It's absolutely look over my shoulder and see how I've made this quilt. As the same as with, with my, um, my embroidered blocks quilt. They've just sort of evolved. Um, I will get back to doing a few of my um, small table toppers um, that I had I had done a couple of them. Um, I've gotten waylaid on these two quilts, and it, again in the summertime, um, it's it was too hot. <laughs> it's just too hot. Um, I'm fairly cool in my sewing room here. I have a ceiling fan and I have a fan blowing, um, but it, man. That 96, 98 degree weather here in Pennsylvania was really doing us in. It was very, very hot. But I'm back and I will be showing you some still pictures and some video of, of my uh, work in progress. It's a work in progress so far of my quilt. So I do hope you are keeping cool wherever you are or warm. <laughs> um, I, this is not unusual. The, um, the rest of the country is experiencing fires and flooding and uh, heat waves unbelievable i said i always say what is next locusts <laughs> most probably all right folks i hope you enjoy the video and again thank you so much thank you so much it's a personal thank you we love you guys so very much for making my channel happen for um watching me waffle on and doing it is whatever we are doing in my sewing room thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts love from the true loves See i'm going to be outlining my cardinal it's upside down right now and um, and free motion quilting like i've done in my other blocks here which i will be showing you um a small meandering stitch now i've not except for one i started out doing i've not uh stitched in the ditch any of these blocks i'm just pulling out these the um the, the fabric um, with my hands, knowing that I have safety pin it really well. And I am using a 100 weight silk thread in my machine. The bobbin is just a 50 weight cotton, but the top thread to, to um, go around this, these images is a 100 weight and the free motion quilting that I'm doing in this cream block here is the hundred weight. Um, I think it's coming up very uh, fine as opposed to the, a little bit of a heavier cotton that I will be showing you um, for my borders and everything. So echoing the image here and then also with this with this thread I am going to be just it's even though it's like a, a silvery thread I'm going to just be outlining this say this wing here and maybe the head just to make it the relief a little bit um, more to make the, the the images which again I will be showing you um, when I'm finished th doing this how that my embroidery is going to sort of pop out I've already brought up my thread over here and I'm going to start free motion quilting again I have my machine at um, my I've dropped my feed dogs I have my machine set at um, zero stitch length and and as you know free mo motion quilting the needle is just going up and down and the practice that comes with this is keeping your stitches the exact same length now you can't really see what I'm doing here. I'll just outline this very close to my stitches, my hand embroidery stitches. Again, I'm just sort of pulling the fabric to each side. Come down here. And then I'll go around the flower.
And I don't know if you can see that, but already, most probably you can't, but already, needle down, the image is sort of puffing up. Now, as you know, I always say quilt consistently. This quilt has been quilted about every quarter of an inch. And, and I don't usually do that because, as you know, I like to have a lot of more air in between my stitches. But because this is a wall hanging and because I want it to lay nice and straight um, and to um, have it showcase the images, I'm quilting it very closely. And again, I'm just outlining this hand embroidery. But because I'm quilting this every quarter of an inch or so here, I want to just, and there's what, about five inches there. I just want to come in into the actual image here with my thread, as you can see, onto my embroidery. I'm holding my breath. I'm just going to outline this wing. Just come down here come around and then I'll just uh, just outline the cheek here and that'll be it and you, uh, hopefully you can see that <clears throat> just pull this up that my the um, the Cardinal's breast is a little bit puffy because it's from here to here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to free motion quilt with a meandering stitch in the block here, in the white. Now, as you, as you know, this cream sort of linen was what came with the embroidery, this square here, which I cut to an eight, eight and a half inch square. This is, my, this is another fabric that I've used, this um, sort of tone on tone ivory to make this, um, to, to sort of uh, frame my block. Now, again, I'll just bring, thread, bring my threads up and I'm just going to be free motion quilting some squiggles, some going around, up and down, and again, keeping it every about quarter of an inch away. Coming into the, the design. With free motion quilting, if you, if you get, find yourself boxed into a corner, that's okay. Just stop your, stop your st stitching, sort of secure it, and just start again. Now usually with free motion quilting, I would like to move my piece around, but because this is a, a fairly decent sized quilt, I'm just trying to um, make sure that my brain memory is not doing the exact same thing. And that if you shift your fabric when you're free motion quilting, you're assured that your swiggles will be going all different ways, which is what you want. And hopefully you can see, I'm going to cut my threads there and there and underneath you can see that in that period of time I've outlined my cardinal it's nice and puffy but secure and I have free motion quilted in that block now my I have done this block over here my butterfly and what I'm doing is I'm free motion quilting sort of a loopy E in the green and then I'm doing sort of a I'm outlining these my uh, pink and white doing circles in these things and I'm just going to repeat that exact same uh, quilting stitch throughout and then on my border here I've just experimented with another thread I'm not using the silk thread I'm using this co connecting threads sort of a, a, a yellowy cream in my border and I'm doing a um, uh, circles, my lovely circles, and then my circles, and this on my ice cream cone border. And I will be doing this um, straight stitch and then my circles all the way around. Um, and then on this one, I've just done sort of a 
curved stitch and then like a, a teardrop there. I will be securing my ice cream cone edge very close to the edge all the way around with a, just a straight stitch um, and then I will be uh, binding this but for now I'm going to be working on um, my I've done about five of my blocks as you can see here's my Highland cow and as you can see I outlined his little nose there the the uh, fox hopefully you can see that I've outlined his tail and his chest and done the same free motion quilting and the elephant I've outlined her trunk and her her tusks and her ear right there so when you can feel that it's like a, a relief and then again I will go back uh, at when I'm completely done and then stitch in the ditch I've not stitched in the ditch at all usually I do that at the beginning but I've not done that at all I'll go back and I'll stitch in the ditch so everything all of these square um, and lines lay nice and flat and um yeah yeah what do you think oh I have to do I have to do in here um, that's why that's just pinned there I'll just probably do a, squir a swirl there I will finish my circles all the way on this cream border and continue there and again when I'm done I will go back and I'll stitch in the ditch all the way around so there is my it's not taking me too long well sort of I'm, I'm quilting this with every literally every every quarter of an inch but again just in that real time you can see how quickly that came up. All right, folks, I hope you like this.